some of the scurrying around was this morning I came in and, and normally I'm here by quarter to, to six or so. I didn't make it in until six or a few minutes after. And normally I preach through my sermon and, and I just spent a time with the Lord that didn't let go for a while. And uh, then I was going through the sermon and I always go through the entire thing. And I made it through one, two, three, four, five verses. And I got a phone call from a man who he'd been in prison. He um, been addicted. He had made a covenant with Satan and he almost died last night. He was scared and he opened his phone and the site started coming up. Just amazing. Uh, different websites coming up saying about his need. He started to sense a call to Africa. And I said, I've been there doing deliverance. I said, I've been there and done that and been to India and different places doing this kind of work. But um, he really needed more time than I had to give him. I mean, it was quarter to eight. I go home at, I try to get home at eight, eat, shower, come back, leave to come back in at 8.30. But we prayed with him and he began coughing out demons and, and just pray for Cody. Uh, I'll be talking with him later. But I want to hear, and I've got two titles, one that Adam has on the overhead, one that God gave me afterward, Grasp God's Vision and Prosper in All Things. And then the Lord said to me, we need to come into the life-giving power and prosper in all things. And I want parents and grandparents to grab hold of what I'm going to say today, or what Holy Spirit is. I don't know what He's going to say. I preach from manuscripts every week. That's how I write books so easy. I have manuscripts. God didn't want that this week. He wanted the pure Word of God with Holy Spirit explanation of it. But the Bible tells us why there are so many people in the streets and government in the world that are listless, that are caught up in deception, joining smash and grab mobs, rioting, destroying themselves with addictions, immoral living, and headed straight to hell. And this concerns our kids, this concerns our grandkids, it concerns the people around us. And I'm going to read the very same verse from, from eight different translations. I have no idea how far Holy Spirit is going to take us today, and that's okay with me. I hope it's okay with you. Proverbs 29, 18, and I didn't even write down, this, must, this one must be the New King James Version. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. And there's a little asterisk by revelation, and it's explained prophetic vision. If people don't have a prophetic vision for their life, they cast off all, all restraint. Pam and I were coming home from Three Rivers the other day, down Featherstone Road, and there was a guy going probably 70, 80 miles an hour that blew through the uh, uh, Stubby Road um, stop sign. He never slowed down 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour. And I pray, God, if he's going to kill somebody, let it only be him. I didn't pray for his protection. Maybe I should have. But if he's going to kill anybody, let him not take any innocent person out with him. The very next day, she had somebody do the same thing. I think it was that weight road. Never stopped for M66. Blew through the intersection about 50 miles an hour. People that don't have a vision, don't have a reason for live, don't have a God calling and an understanding. And before he forms in the womb, he, he knew them, he chose them, he appointed them. They, they have that appointment. But if they don't have the revelation of that appointment, their lives are going hell bound, scattered, broken because they don't have a vision. And this applies to every child. It applies to every adult. There's so many kids that have no idea why they're on earth. Because they don't have a vision, they cast off restraint. Same verse, uh, verse from the Amplified um, Classic Version. Where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. But he who keeps the law of God, which includes that of man, blessed, happy, fortunate, and enviable, is him. 
God has a redemptive revelation for every single life. We are created in Christ Jesus under good works which he prepared in advance for us to do. Every person has a prophetic destiny, something that they can do better than anybody else born, something that they're called to, they'll be happier than, than possible, than they thought possible, if they get into the channel God created them to walk in. Without that, they perish. They die early. They die in drunken crashes. They die of overdoses, unless they have this vision. Very same verse um, from the CEB, Proverbs 29, 18. But when there's no vision, the people get out of control. But happy is whoever or is he who obeys the law and you think of the rioting that some of these stupid democrats excuse me have have applauded and, and saying let's get rid of the police and, and some of these rioting and smashing grab groups they're totally out of control why because they don't have a glimpse of why they're on earth they don't have a glimpse of god's calling and purpose for their lives same verse from the ehv Without prophetic vision, a people is unrestrained. Unrestrained. But a people which follows the law is blessed. And God spoke this to me. America is like a carriage, horse and buggy, Amish buggy, like a buggy without reins. The power is there, the vehicle is there, but there's no way of stirring it because the people have lost contact with the revelation, the vision that, that God has given to them, and they, they're just, they're unrestrained. There's no stopping them. They take an a, a assault rifle into a high school in Detroit area, and they murder five kids. Why? Unrestrained. Kind of looks like their parents never restrained them. They're being judged and held accountable. Same verse from the um, EXB Bible. Where there is no word from God, vision and prophecy, people are uncontrolled, the people perish, but those who obey what they've been taught guard the law and happy, blessed are they. When a child, when an adult, when a teenager does not have a word from the Lord... They, they're out of control. They lose sight of the vision of things that God has spoken to them. No word. Are you doing okay? Same verse, God's word. Without prophetic vision, people run wild. Have you seen that? Pulling down of monuments, trying to destroy our nation's history. Refusing to accept both the, the truth of both the good and the bad. What's wrong with these people? Why, why are they doing this? Why is there vandalism in our cemeteries? What possible joy can there be in tipping over somebody's gravestone? What on earth is wrong with people? They don't have prophetic vision. You getting the theme here? Same verse from the message. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Do you think anybody really wants to die penniless, sick, and hopeless? That happens when people don't see what God is doing. They stumble over themselves. They make more mistakes than they... Uh, do things right. The New Living Translation. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. Think of that. When people don't accept divine guidance from God, from the Word of God, from parents, from preachers, from leaders, they run wild, but whoever obeys the law is joyful. 
God spoke this to me. He said, folly is bound in the heart of children. It is. We had Nash, our youngest great-grandchild, at our house yesterday. I think he's two now. Man, he's a terror. Cute kid. But there's folly bound in his heart. I mean, he took the little cat toy, that little, it's got a fish on it, like on a little fishing pole. And you, our cat's so fat that we're supposed to make him exercise, so you get him going around in circles with that little fish. Well, Alex took that little fish pole out on the porch, and he went fishing in the cat bowl. <laughs> Folly was bound, bound in his heart. He ran into the table with a nativity set. I don't know why. Broke two of the hands off one of the... Folly is bound in the heart of a child. Somewhere the scripture says, and the rod of correction turns them from it. We have a lie in our nation that it's wrong to spank children. God says if you don't spank a child, you hate them. Read Proverbs. Read it. I didn't hear any amens there. By the way, spanking, I, I need to explain it. Spanking isn't yelling, screaming, and clobbering a kid, abusing them. Spanking is taking that child to a quiet space and spanking them with a rod or a spoon or whatever, slowly, carefully, mournfully, until that child starts crying repentantly. If you stop spanking when a child is screaming and swearing and yelling, you haven't done your job. You keep on it until you hear the remorse. And then you can love on that child, reassure him or her of your love, and everything goes, goes well. One more of these version, verse, verses or translations. Where there is no clear prophetic vision, people quickly wander away. But when you follow the revelation of the world, world excuse me, word, heaven's bliss fills your soul. Passion translation. The United States has the highest recidivism rate in the whole world. 40% of those released from prison are back in prison within 12 months. 68% are arrested for a new crime within three years. 77% of those who get out of jail are arrested within five years. Why is that? If they have no prophetic vision or revelation, they quickly wander away. I wrote two letters to people in, in Branch County Jail this week. Both of them had written to me. You have to use a tiny little card and you can't put a whole lot. If you send it, send it in an envelope, you get it returned. But they will wander away if somebody doesn't give them vision of what God has for their life. And this isn't one of the verses I wrote down, but Proverbs 22, 6. The best translation is Weymouth. I think it's Weymouth. It might be Marty. Um, Darby, I mean. Train up a child in the way he should go is the way the King James says it. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. We preached that for years. We heard that preached for years. Make children read the Bible. Make them come to church. Make them come to Sunday school. Back them, make them come to Sunday night. Make them behave, and when they're old, they'll not depart from it. And everywhere you go to, to a conference, somebody's calling and saying, and today we heard it in prayer, that the prodigals are coming home. Well, why did they go away? Because they were not trained according, this is the best translation, they were not trained according to the tenor of their way. That's something parents miss it on. I missed it. I kind of did with my kids. Training up a child according to the tenor of their way means you help them have a vision for what God created them for. If they're into sports, then you give them opportunities to excel at sports. If they're into music, you, you give them opportunity to ex excel in music. If they're into business, we have a granddaughter that when she was seven years old was all about making money. Well, you help her learn how to be an entrepreneur. What do you do? You find out who God created them to be, and you help them to be that. And if you don't, if they don't have that clear prophetic vision for their life, 
Bible warns us they're going to wander, quickly wander away. The word vision, the Hebrew kazan, uh, or kazon if you want to say it uh, phonetically, it means a sight, a dream, a revelation, an oracle, a vision. Transliteration from kaza, see, behold. People need to see and behold what God has in store for them, what God is calling them, them to, and that's just so important. I read something last week, and it was so good. I'm, I'm going to read it again this week. Salvador, I gave you a copy, and you didn't pick it up. I have two copies of this if anybody wants one. Wasn't that a great message Salvador preached last week? He really talked about incarnation. It was good. But Alex Craven said this about your kids. Don't feel sorry for or fear for your kids, grandkids, because the world they are going to grow up in is not what it used to be. God created them and called them for the exact moment in the time they're in. Their life wasn't a coincidence or an accident. Raise them up to know the power they walk in as children of God. Train them the authority of His Word. Teach them to walk in faith knowing God is in control. Empower them to know they can change the world. Let me say that. Empower them to know they can change the world. Don't teach them to be fearful and disheartened by the state of the world, but hopeful that they can do something and will do something about it. Every person in all of history has been placed in the time that they were, were in because of God's sovereign plan. He knew Daniel could handle the lion's den. He knew David could handle Goliath. He knew Esther could handle Haman. He knew Peter could handle persecution. He knows that your child can handle whatever challenge they face in their life. He created them specifically for it. Don't be scared for your children, but be honored that God chose you to be the parent and to parent the generation that is facing the greatest challenges of our lifetime. Rise up to the challenge. Raise Daniels, Davids, Esthers, and Peters. God isn't scratching his head over what he's going to do with this mess of a world. He has an army he's raising up to drive back the darkness and make him known all over the earth. Don't fear. Don't let fear steal the greatness God has placed in them. I know it's hard to imagine them as anything besides their sweet little babies. And we just want to protect them from everything that could ever be hard on them. But they were born for such a time as this. Isn't it important that we help them see the vision of why God has them here? So with fewer notes than I ever use, and I'm only on page two, so I, have, I came knowing today I might preach it all, all these verses. I might not, and that's okay. Again, I'm out of my comfort zone. We need to press into vision. Reading from Genesis 15, 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. And I'm going to open up some of this chapter. And again, without notes, just letting Holy Spirit speak. The vision that God has for each life is big enough to scare the out of them. And maybe they need the out of them in order to fully get into the vision. If you have a vision that you think you can do, you haven't got God's vision yet. He calls you to do the impossible. He calls you to do things that you never would dream of, think of, or dare to do. And when you get an idea that's too big for you to wear, then grow into it. Because that's a vision that God has for us. He said to Abraham, do not be afraid. I'm your shield. I'm your reward. Walk with me. Go all the way with me. And you'll see what we can do together. In verses 17 to 20 of Genesis 7, uh, 5. And it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark that there was appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between those pieces. 
Now, when, when people sacrificed animals, they cut them from the tip of their head right down the center of their bodies. They laid them, laid them out half on this side, half on that side. And in this per picture, the smoking oven, the burning torch, passed between those two pieces. And on the same day, God made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the Canaanites, the uh, Canaanites, the Catamites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gergesites, Jebusites, and maybe some, some mosquito bites. And God says, you're going to deal with all sorts of enemies. They're in front of you. You have them. Fear not. I am with you. I will strengthen you. I will, I will bring you into this. And something God was speaking to me about this God uses covenant people to bring order to the world. That's something we have very little of is true covenant. Very little. Marriages, very little covenant. Churches, very little covenant. Government, very little government. There, but God is going to use people who will know his will and say, I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to accomplish this thing. I will not give up until what you've called me to do is accomplished. Moving on to Jacob in Genesis 46, 2. And I know I don't preach this way. I hope you're okay with it. God told me to. Then God spoke to Israel in the visions, say visions, of the night, and said, Jacob, Jacob. His name meant liar, liar, deceiver. And God was calling him where he was at. Not where he was going to end up, but he said, I want to call you right at this point. And I want to take you to where I want you to go. And the visions of the night, they say that old, old men will dream dreams, young men will dream have visions, and on and on in Joel too. But there are times that God is showing things. There's people like my wife that are seers. I was in Colorado Springs in 2001, August of 2001. And we were talking on the phone and she said, I need to tell you why I packed your running shoes. Something's going to happen on the East Coast there's airplanes that are going to be hijacked and planes won't be, all air traffic will be shut down. She saw that a month before the terrorist attack in New York City on 9-11-2001. And God is close and wants to give people a vision for their life. He wants to break off this stupid thinking that God wants to make us miserable, so he's calling us to do something we don't like to do. That's a lie of Satan. God created each of us, and he is a perfect uh, parent, bringing us up to the tenor of our ways, because he knows that that thing which he is calling us to will make us more satisfied than anything else we can do in our life. That young man I talked to this morning, he has a vision. I don't know how accurate it is yet. But he sees himself setting captives free in Africa. I'm willing to invest some time in that young man. I'd love to see him do that. He has a vision that's bigger than his years in prison. He's got a, a, a vision that's greater than the felonies that are on his record. And I just believe God might be calling him to do those things. Numbers 12, 2. Then God said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, Jehovah, make himself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Now you remember Mary saw an angel. Joseph didn't at first. The Lord spoke to him in a dream. We are in a portal of revelation right now, and it is so important that we pay attention to what we're dreaming, what we're thinking. 
I went through my, every day I do my daily listening room and a daily journal. Just for the fun of it, I put dream in my search engine. And there were 62 times that God spoke in dreams this year. And I thought, I need to go back over them. Now, some of them were Pam's dreams that she shared. But we need to be more alert than ever to the dreams that we're having and the dreams that our children and grandchildren are having. You doing okay? Numbers 24, 4, the utterance of him who hears the word of God, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down, not asleep, but with eyes wide open. God is speaking this day. He's speaking part of the reason he's speaking is because the world is in such a mess and so few people hear him. I've been listening to prophets like Robin Bullock of late. Love that man. Just love his teaching. Lance Wall now. Chuck Pierce, a different one. God is speaking. We need to grab hold of the eyes of them. And, and this is Second Chronicles 2020. What's it? Maybe I need to look it up. I can't quote it. I memorized where the verse is because God said when I read it the first time and really saw it, I want to give people 2020 vision. Early in the morning, it says, Second Chronicles 20, 20. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Now, their, their country was in trouble. The Ammonites, all these people are swooping down on them. They were in an old God place where most people would say, Oh, crap. Because everything was going wrong. And, and the prophet stood up. And he said, listen to me, have faith in the Lord your God and you'll be upheld. Have faith in God and you maintain. Have faith in God and, and you'll keep on living. Have faith in his prophets and you'll be successful. So do you want to just make do, make it through? Or do you want to be successful in the kind of success that, that measures the vision God is giving us is what God is speaking through his servants and prophets. That's part of the reason I, 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 when we, and Sandy's the one that does it the most, speaks in tongues and waits for an interpreter. And Jeff will interpret or Sandy will interpret. I think today's the first time I have here in church where I heard a, a second one. We need to pay attention because God is speaking things our human minds aren't able to receive unless we receive them by our human spirit and if we grab hold in our spirit of what God is speaking he'll give us the the the, the outline the plan the 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 schematic the, the the trajectory to move into what he's calling them to that my friends is what will change our world and our children and our grandchildren First Samuel 3.15. So Samuel lay down until morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel was afraid to tell Eli the vision. Remember the story. Samuel hadn't received and the word of the Lord was scarce in that day. Very few people were hearing God speak. Must be they went to denominational churches or, or liturgical churches. I'm not sure why. But they weren't hearing God. And, and Samuel, here's, here's who he thought it was Eli calling him. Master, I'm here. And he said, I didn't say anything. Get back to bed. Three times. Master, I'm here. I heard you. And finally Samuel thought, well, maybe God's in this. Go back and say, speak, Lord, I'm listening. And he went back. The little boy Samuel went back. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. I'm about to deal with these corrupt politicians and kings. I'm about to put my foot down on them. And God is telling your sons are going to die. It's going to get bad. The glory of the Lord is going to depart. And no wonder Samuel was afraid to talk to him. There's, there's a secret here to receiving vision. 
If God is giving you a dream, a vision, speaking to you, using a song to that just grabs your heart and pulls you in, say, God, why? How? What? Clarify this to me. And then you'll be getting the juices of God Almighty flowing through your veins that will lead you into doing things that you never thought you might be able to do. Verse 16. I'm still in first, or second Samuel. Actually, I'm not sure if the first one's wrong or the second one because they follow each other. Second Samuel 7, 16. And your house and your kingdom shall be established before you. Your thrones will be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so Nathan, this is 2 Samuel, Nathan spoke to David. Then David went in before the Lord and he said, Who am I, O Lord? God, what is my house that you have brought me so far? He was saying, what I'm sensing from you, almighty God, is bigger than I am. If all you attempt is what you can do, you're not living by faith. Maybe by fate, but not by faith. But you start realizing how huge God's call and purpose on you is and step into it and say, yeah, Lord, who am I? I'll do it anyways. And then God starts to open things up. And then Romans 3, 3 and 4. For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not. Let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, you may be justified in your words and may overcome when you are judged. I think what Paul is saying is there's things that are so much bigger than you and so much larger than the mistakes that you have made that you'll think there's no way God can do this because I've messed up too big. And he's saying, you don't understand the grace of God. I want to take you in deeper. I want to take you in further. And I want to reveal even greater things in these. I remember in 1995 when we went through, and literally Pam and I went through hell. We were pastoring, pastoring a denominational church. We had grown really fast. We had a good church, lot, lots of great people in it. But then I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Then I started speaking in tongues. Then I started prophesying. I remember the very first time I ever prophesied and there was a guy sitting about where Sherry was. His eyes got as big as saucer and he, what in is going on here? And it was just that the word of the Lord came upon me. It was based on Hebrews. Uh, uh, there, there's a shaking coming. I, I can almost remember it. The Lord is about to shake the earth and this shaking is going to be a greater. It's going to be so great that only that which... That only that which cannot be shaken remains. And we are in a time when God is shaking things. Oh no, Holy Spirit's taking me places you might not like. Many of these viruses, COVID-19, Omicron, Delta, are human-made, intensely inspired by the, the, the devil and his host. And there will be even a greater one being released because Satan has put in the hearts of men the insane need to make sure that everybody is vaccinated. And the pressure is going to go greater. There are, there are plots to actually have roadblocks where if you're going by a, a large city, you will be stopped. And if you cannot prove a vac vaccination that you've been vaccinated, you might even be arrested for that. My friends, I tell you that the mark of the beast is being set up by Satan himself. And if they try to get you to have a mark in your hand and your forehead uh, uh, implant in you, know that if you get that, that you're going to be denied the things of God that you want. 
We are living in a horrific time. We have antichrist people. Spurred on, I mean, Biden doesn't, doesn't have any wits about him. He was not duly elected. He's a puppet of other people. Pardon me if you like him, that, that, that's your privilege. Not fit to govern the land. And he is controlling us, and he being used, and he wants to have everybody. And who's paying for all this? He thinks he is? We are. And we're going to have to come to a choice. We may have to come to the choice. Are we going to let Baal control us, or are we going to obey Jesus Christ? Forgive me if I'm getting too open we're in a tough time. Can't keep your job unless you get jabbed. And now there's not enough people to work. There's as many truth-loving doctors who warn you against a jab. And I'm not speaking bad about anybody that got it. Doctors push it, push it, push it. They did with Pam and me. We have a great physician. And again, I'm not making any judgment of anyone that's got them. But you better be clear in your own heart and mind before you do that. No wonder our church keeps growing so much. <laughs> but somebody needs to speak truth. Second Chronicles 32, 32. I'm going to make it through page three. I might even look into page four if you're doing okay. He sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Luke chapter nine tells about three people that came up to Jesus. Um, it's either chapter 9 or chapter 6. God wants us to go there, so we will. I think it's chapter 9. It's still in my Bible. They had just gone through the time when the disciples were arguing among themselves who was the greatest. And you get down into Luke chapter 9, verse 17. As they, Jesus, and the disciples were walking along the road, a man said to him, I'll follow you. I'll go. Wherever you go, I'll go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And you don't see that man again. He just drifts off into the dismal darkness. He said to another man, this one, Jesus is initiating it. Follow me. You know, Jesus never said, pray this little prayer and accept me as your little baby savior. And your little... Never once did he say that. He said, if any man wants to come after me, let him take up his cross, deny himself and follow me. For if anybody wants to save his life, he'll lose it. But whoever gives his life for my sake, the same will find it. And here Jesus says to this man, follow me. But the man said, Lord, first, let me go bury my father. Now, his father hadn't died. He was saying, wait until my dad dies, and then I'll have the inheritance, and it'll be easy for me to get to schooling, to get to training, to, to follow you and do the works that you want me to do. You never heard that man again because he wasn't willing to take that first step by faith, and he's lost. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. He didn't. Lost in history. Still another uh, uh, volunteer, I will follow you, Lord. Here I am, send me. But first, first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus says, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back looks back to the things behind, looks back to what it cost, looks back, is fit for service in the kingdom of God. How many people have taken some very good steps 
and then gone backwards. It's become the norm, take three steps forward, two steps back. God is saying, who will follow me step by step until we get all the way to the destination? The telling thing of Second Chronicles 32, 32 is as long as he sought the Lord, he had understanding. The minute you quit seeking the Lord, you lose the understanding of the visions that God has given me. I want to go just a little bit further and then I'll let you go. I realize that we live in a day where there are demonic visions. And one way you can tell if a, a vision is demonic, if it kills you, it was demonic. If it keeps you from going forward, it was demonic. Job talks about it. And now a word was secretly brought to me, and my ear received a whisper of it. The kingdom of darkness is a kingdom of secrecy. It makes vows and oaths. We'll never tell anybody we became a Freemason. We'll never tell anybody we're an Eastern Star or Demolay or Knights of Pythias or Knights of Columbus. We will keep this secret. That the kingdom of darkness is one of secrecy. The kingdom of God is one of light where things are both brought forth into the light. And Job said, now a word was secretly brought to me and my ear received a whisper of it and disquieting thoughts from the visions of the night when deep sleep falls on men, fear came upon me and trembling, which made my bones shake. I'll tell you, there's times when I've trembled in the presence of the Lord. There's times I've fallen on my face in the presence of the Lord. But when this kind of fear comes upon you, it's not the fear of the Lord that's the beginning of wisdom, Proverbs 1, 7. This is the fear of Satan that keeps you from receiving the wisdom that God wants you to have. In Job 7, 14, 16, When I say my bed will comfort me, my couch will ease my complaint, then you scare me with dreams and terrify me with vision, so that my soul chooses strangling and death rather than my body. If those dreams and visions are making you scared to death, they're not of God. Any vision from God gives you hope for better. Any vision. Job 33. And God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream and a vision of night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. You'll like this. God just told me to stop with that verse. Father, I ask that you would release upon your people a perception of what you are doing. Let us perceive your call, your direction, your dream, your vision. Open our ears to hear your voice. And Lord, seal the instruction that you are giving us. Lord, I ask that you give every parent and grandparent at least a preview of the vision that you have for each child and grandchild. Raise our spiritual antennas so we can receive the kind of vision that without we, they might perish. Lord, we ask you to stir. Stir vision today. Stir revelation today. Lord, I ask you to stir revelation that is greater than anything the devil can whisper or use his soldiers to try to overpower. Oh God, we cry out vision today in Jesus name amen would you stand I want to bless you
before I bless you, I need to lead you into right spiritual alignment. Every person has a spirit that perceives and receives the things of God. Every person has a soul. It's a mind, will, emotions, and identity. Every person has a body. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you. That word means set apart. It means to cut off the dross. It means to burn off the things that hold you back. May he sanctify you through and through. Listen to the order that your entire spirit, number one, your spirit man, it's actually in your belly. Jesus said, from your belly will flow rivers of living water. By this he meant the, the fullness, the, the being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the word that belly in the Greek is womb. From your womb, birthing the things that God has created in you will be liver, rivers of living water that will enable you to do everything that God is calling you to do. A spiritual person is not a person that's born again, said Watchman Nee. A spiritual person is one who's born again and walking in the right alignment which means that their spirit man in their belly is in charge of their life. It's in charge of the way they think, the way they choose, the way they feel, the way they identify themselves. And then let your body, your, your soul be in charge of your body. So I bless you today that you are being sanctified through and through, that your spirit man is rising up to take the throne of your life and to rule and order the way you think, choose, feel, and uh, identify yourself. May it be your spirit man that's directing the, holding the reins and directing your life. And may your body come into submission of that. And Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Spirit and the authority of the Christ, we ask that you, rele first we ask that you would bring back visions and dreams that have been lost. I bless you with a renewal of dreams and visions, a calling back of them. And I bless you with new visions that'll be so much greater than where you are and who you are that you're going to have to depend on God Almighty. And with His help, you will break through. I bless you with this in Jesus' name. Amen.